Hi guys and welcome to our next video. This video is fully theoretical and it's all about how to analyze vulnerabilities. What you need to know, what you have to do and what to actually do from that moment on when you actually have the vulnerability, how to analyze it and what to do from now. In the previous videos we've covered the whole process of actually gaining information, gathering as much information as possible and actually seeking and finding vulnerabilities. That can include scanning the version, seeing the version, comparing the versions. This can be scanning the network for potential open ports that are not supposed to be open. This can include uh, browsing through a web application if there's any and actually seeing what can you do from there, what parameters to inject and is there a possible web forms that, that can accept different parameters. Is there a possible login form with the default credentials and many more stuff. So uh, we've covered all that process and from now we are actually starting to explain how to analyze all those things and furthermore what can you do with that information after you analyze the vulnerabilities. So uh, before we begin I just want to say that if you misunderstood something or you have any questions feel free to post in the comments below. and. Now let's start. Let me first explain what's a vulnerability. So basically vulnerability is a misconfiguration or a weak spot in other words. The vulnerability is basically where the people who configured the software, the machines have mistaken somewhere or have forgotten to do or to add something. In instance, all the machines are configured by a person or people, also known as sysadmins. These people are actually paying call station to firewalls, to all the process about the machines, to all the network infrastructure, to everything possible, just everything possible. They are the ones who are uh, actually engaging with that and just configuring the whole infrastructure, the whole server. They are setting up uh, all the users, all the permissions and basically all the infrastructure available. They are the ones who are doing that. And since they are people, and the people are most likely to create mistakes, to do mistakes, they also do mistakes and these mistakes are the actual vulnerabilities because the vulnerability is, uh, is basically the weak spot where something is not properly configured, where something is not properly set up, so you can actually force it to do extreme things that it's not supposed to do. So this is where basically the hackers attack this is what the hackers are seeking and what they are looking for, the misconfiguration. So uh, this can be really anything, there are a lot of examples for misconfiguration. It can be for example all the patch versions, it can be for example uh, injectable parameters, it can be anything. And the web application is also developed by developers and the web application is basically a piece of code running on a web server. The ones who are responsible for the, for the web server are called sysadmins, but they are doing their own things like the infrastructure. And the, one, the ones who are developing the web application are called developers and they are focused just on that. They are, uh, including, they are not included in any kind of network security. They do not get involved with that. They just take their uh, job in, into creating and developing that specific web application. And since they are people as well, there's a chance that they can do a huge mistakes as well while developing their web app. So this can lead to potential weak spot, to potential exploits. For example, to forget to validate some uh, checks and therefore you can be able to, to actually modify the request, to actually inject parameters that you are not supposed to and so on and so on and so on. So uh, the, the idea here is that Every machine, every piece of software is here configured by a man, by a person or people. So there is a chance that they have mistake, they have made a mistake about that software or hardware. And therefore we are searching just for that mistake. The hacker job is not to actually go through the wall, the hacker job is to bypass it. Keep that in mind. And this is why and this is what, what the hackers are actually looking for, the weak spot. The most easy way to break through. So uh, what are the types of vulnerabilities? As I said in the previous slide, there is a cold side vulnerability and the server side. So let's take a closer look in the cold side. 
So the code side vulnerability in most cases is forgotten security checks in the source code. It can be any security checks that actually can prevent us from injecting commands, injecting special parameters. So there's, there are places where that security checks are not configured or actually forgotten. So the system is actually not restricting us from uh, injecting whatever we want. And therefore, this is a potential vulnerability for cross-site cross scripting attack, SQL injection attack, command, uh, command injection attacks, and many more. The piece of software that actually requires the checks are basically the if statements, and if the software developer forgets that if statements, you can actually bypass that and actually break the system so that they do not make the server, they do not make the application to actually check you, to check your parameters, to check your request, and therefore you are actually allowed to enter the system or allowed to do the stuff you are aimed or want to. There can be also default conditions, forgotten, uh, forgotten validation checks, and really many more. The code side vulnerability are, are discovered during the enumeration of the web application. And as you remember before, we actually are browsing through everywhere. We are seeing everything available. We are trying all different parameters everywhere we can. We are actually doing everything we have on our mind. And this is what is the process of finding, seeking vulnerabilities and analyzing. For example, uh, your, your job is not to actually go to a website and just try every attack possible. Your job is to go to the website and start looking for code misconfiguration, start looking for things that are not supposed to work that way. For example, if there is a platform and you try to upload the file, you can try to bypass the upload mechanism that allows you or denies you to upload file with specific ext extensions because if you enumerate that the machine is uh, like Linux based and you can uh, actually upload a shell script then, and you can furthermore execute it, you can do really bad damage to the system. So uh, this is a typical example of code vulnerability. For example, not checking the file format, not checking the file extensions. Another example is that uh, it do not check what input parameter you are putting inside and it do not block any input parameters, for example, you can, uh, for example, you can easily inject script uh, tags, HTML tags, and so on. And another good vulnerability is that you can actually uh, create a string terminator, and after that string terminator, you can actually execute whatever you put after that. So, for example, uh, you put a random string, and therefore you put a string, string terminator. And when the server actually sees that, he says that, okay, here's the string, uh, but it's not the whole thing. So after that terminator, it executes whatever you put them, whatever you put them. So uh, it can be common, it can be specific comments, it can be anything you put them, you put there. So uh, it's really dangerous exploits and more people are actually misconfiguring that and they are paying really high price for that. So this is the basics of code side vulnerabilities. They are stored in the web application and they are made by the developers. So they are most likely did not configure something properly. And therefore we can actually force the server, the machine, the, the application to behave different and unexpected depending on what we are passing for parameters or files or the things we want. So let's skip to the server side vulnerability. And this is the most cases misconfigured versions, old date versions, forgotten to actually patch, and so on and so on and so on. So in server side, we have to actually scan for versions. We have to actually scan for uh, firewall rules. So basically, there can be a potential risk of forgetting proper firewall rules. So you can actually pass specific file, pass specific packets, crafted packets, to actually malicious crafted packets, to actually inject and gain a shell over the system. So if the firewall is not set up correctly, you can easily bypass it with no worries. And of course, it can be misconfigured permission, which is a really huge topic. For example, if there is a user actually with permission that is not supposed to be to have, and you actually exploit that user, you can get full permission of the machine. The permission uh, 
the permission issues are quite common and they are really hard to patch and fix because they can do a lot of damage and after that they do that damage it's really hard to back up everything and to to get in track easy so they are really dangerous tags and the sysadmins must be really careful while setting up the permissions because you don't want to because it's easy to break through an open door for example they can leave with proper permissions they can leave system files they can leave uh, user files like to be touchable and ed editable by a user and this is a permission issue so there, those types of attacks are really dangerous this vulnerability is huge so you can keep track of it the server side vulnerabilities are basically discarded during the network integration so for example when you end map a target you see all the versions all the ports you see all that stuff and therefore you can start analyzing all of that thing for example if the php version is older if the apache version is older if it's older what can you do from there and what can you go for what to do after so therefore if you see relevant options about what you actually want to do because there are multiple types of attack as you know one of them is ddos and if you want to ddos the server and you found that the old patch version have the ddos vulnerability stored you can actually use them to ddos that apache server but if your point is not to ddos for example gain reverse shell then you see that the patch version is not vulnerable to that kind of attacks you have you have to go to something else for example see other ports see versions there and just try to enumerate more and more stuff be, uh, until you find what you actually seek that the place which is vulnerable and where you can exploit it and give yourself a reverse shell so the server side uh, vulnerabilities are, are stayed on the server on the infrastructure and they are uh, in most cases related to patches to versions to specific software that actually hosts something like apache and netbios and just the services the protocols there so uh how to analyze vulnerability now let's talk about how to analyze code vulnerability so let's say you are into a web page and you actually find some vulnerability how to analyze it what to do so depends on that based on the vulnerability you found Try all the possible parameters, scenarios, things, use your mind, use your imagination in order to actually break that system, in, in, in order to actually gain access or uh, see what other thing you can extract from there. Let's say you've, uh, you've encountered a place or form when that form can actually accept JavaScript. So from there, you know that it's accepting JavaScript, this is the vulnerability. So you can actually search for exploit, develop exploit, or use the current exploit you have in order to actually gain access, in order to steal information, create links, send that link, use social engineering attacks. Just from there, you can straightforward build an attack vectors and start actually exploiting that weak spot, exploiting that uh, vulnerability, and start actually hacking into the systems. But first, you have to actually think about different scenarios, think about what can you do from there, and uh, think about what's the actual case you want what's the actual deal you are trying to do so what you are aiming for if it's reverse shell okay you so if it's like stealing users credentials information okay it can be like uh, binding shells to users that click the link it can be like binding paywalls to that binding viruses it can be really just anything so while finding that vulnerability why when you just find it you have to think about what what you want to do from there, what's your goal, and what exactly you want to hack. And of course, you can use your creativity in order to expand that vulnerability. For example, if it's just uh, accepting JavaScript, it can also accept HTML tags. So if it accepts HTML tag, you can try for uh, to, to create remote file posts, to create uh, remote link redirections, to create... Uh, Command execution window to try all stuff possible so you can actually extend that vulnerability so you can get even more opportunities for uh, going to your goals and and of course you can use tools to get better information or potentially exploit the found vulnerability for example there's there's a tool that can save us a lot of work a lot of time there are tools that uh, depends on that, on that vulnerability they can give us quite a lot of options 
and they can actually scan that vulnerability that pages for example if you're talking about code vulnerabilities they can scan that page and say uh, what's up from now and what you can actually go for and these tools are quite useful you're gonna see all them in future videos but for now this is the things that you can do for example user creativity expand that vulnerability and therefore keep track your what your goals are and therefore go for exploit and go for your goals now what about the server side uh, in the server side we can actually check all the versions all the exploits out there we can search for uh, all the exploits about that vulnerability start looking for uh, actually manual comparing if that version has that exploit and so on and so on and so on of course there are tools again that can actually do, do the work beside us before us but uh, as i said in the previous video it's better to actually do it manually because that way you fully understand what's happening right there and and therefore what you can actually do your based your actions are based on that previous knowledge so it's really important to before you actually learn and become good ethical hacker to actually do things manual because this is the way you learn and see what's actually happening so you can check for everything possible like for the ports and you can start analyzing the system and see if that port is actually vulnerable if you find that, that there is you can start actually exploiting it searching for versions searching for exploits out there and actually manual check when you exploit something if the output of the exploit is expected from the online source for example if the online source said that there is a DDoS vulnerability and you start exploiting that and you, sh you are sure that this vulnerability is is actually okay for that version you exploit it but the site did not get under uh, control so you know that there's something wrong or uh, you did not do the exploit correctly so you have to compare the output of the exploit from the expected output from the online sources to see if you have actually done the correct exploit or actually they are not correct values and uh, scenarios so uh, how to actually proceed with exploitation the first option is to actually search for potential exploits and the second option is actually developing yourself an exploit so let's go over the what is exploit actually because we've mentioned it a lot of times from here and i really have to make sure that you know what it is so basically exploit is a piece of code chunk of data or a sequence of commands that can take advantage of, of bug or vulnerability so basically the exploit is uh, code this can be packet it, it, it can be many many stuff where actually your machine is sending to other machine and after that machine represents it and analyze it it forces it to do uh, unwanted behavior for example when you are sending a special crafted packets and that machine actually analyze that packets and accept that that packets you get a bind this p shell so uh, you get binded to, to that machine shell and from there you have full control over that the main idea of exploit is to actually gain access and that and that's why they're the most used for gaining access about machines and there are really different kind of exploits about anything there can be exploit about service there can be exploit about specific process there can be exploit about uh, specific program or software and there can, can be exploit about specific version of that software there can be exploits about everything you can even develop yourself an exploit based on the knowledge you have so the exploit is just software or data which actually force in a machine to have and to do unwanted things and to have unwanted behaviors so the exploit is fully depends on the vulnerability you found or the weak spot for example you cannot use exploit for a bind shell if that machine is not vulnerable to that bind shell so uh, the exploit depends on that vulnerability you find the vulnerability seek for exploits or develop yourself an exploit that's the process you cannot exploit a service or a software or a machine that is not vulnerable to that exploit the exploit is basically the method the technology you use that to actually gain access or to break through that vulnerability or weak spot 
the exploit is the thing, the first thing that breaks through that vulnerability, which actually makes the the bridge between seeking and finding vulnerability and actually getting through a remote system. So the exploit is between that. Exploit is the thing that the actions, the, the, the things you do after finding vulnerability, and it depends on that. So as I said before, the information is everything. You need to have a good vulnerability analysis in order to create successful exploit. And so how do you search for exploit? There are multiple online databases like Rapid7, which is the creators of uh, Metasploit, and we're going to see that in future. Exploit DB, CV details, uh, Mitre, and all the search engines can do the work. So there are a really lot of databases, and they, they work really simple. Whenever an exploit is actually released and found, actually, they store it in there. So uh, they store vulnerabilities and exploit there. So actually, when you seek vulnerability, you can use your search engines or one of the following uh, sites to actually see what are what the information you can extract from there or to see if that vulnerability is actually is going to do the work about your current machine or your current target. So in most cases, use the search engines. They are going to make all the reference. And those types of websites are just databases for exploit and vulnerabilities. They are storing everything there. So uh, whenever you're stuck into something, you can try using online search engines to actually browse through them and seek for what you need. So how to develop an exploit? So this is really hard topic and really hard to actually develop an exploit. You have to actually know a lot of things, for example, programming languages like C, C++, Python and Ruby, because th those languages are good for uh, system programming and network programming. And the most exploits are actually based on the system itself or the network. For example, we have exploits that when run on Linux on specific kernels, it's going to give us high privileges. This is like an uh, example of exploit for uh, C system programming, and it's written on C. There's also an exploit that uh, works over the network. It can, for example, DDoS or uh, give us a bind shell or give us a reverse shell. Those things are uh, most likely written on Python because Python is a really good language for that for using networks, uh, sockets, and protocols, and many more stuff. So depending on what exploit you want to build, you can actually use different programming language and therefore start developing the exploit. But before that, you have to actually warn yourself how different systems with different OS are working. OS means uh, operational systems. Before, for, uh, Because, for example, Windows and Linux are working different. They have different kernels. They are working different ways. They are. Uh, they have different process management. They have different threat management. They have all differences there. So, the exploit who is running on Linux will not run on Windows because the systems are different. Of course, there are exploits that can do the, the job about the two operational systems, but yeah. they are quite unique and rare. So, uh, it's hard to develop an exploit for the both operational systems. Then we have to also learn about the process and threats, how they do, how they work, how they actually start and die, how the operational system is working with it, and and actually how the both operational systems are working with threats and process. Because this is the most actually needed theory in order to create yourself an exploit. You need to know how to manipulate those things, the process and the threats, so you can actually exploit the operational system inside. You have to also learn about different services, protocols, how they are working, uh, like what ports they are using, how they are supposed to work. So furthermore, you can actually start building things that are provoking and forcing those services to work and do unwanted behaviors. And of course, you have to learn how to develop networking software, since all the, the most of the exploits are actually through a network, like remote exploits. So. Uh, Network is, is really fundamental. You have to actually need to know how to develop a software who can bypass firewalls, IDS, IPS, and this really huge topic really an, an ocean of information, and it's really hard to develop yourself an exploit. So in order to create successful exploit, you need to combine all of that things in one, and therefore you can actually start managing and creating your exploit. So I've talked about paywalls before and 
what is actually a payload? The payload is a piece of software that executes a malicious activity. Like this is the next step of exporting. Like the payload is coming afterwards, you exploit the target. So you can see the, the link here. First, we have to gather information and then we have to actually start looking for vulnerabilities. We cannot search weak spots without having an information. So when we actually find vulnerability, we can, uh, we can actually start looking for exploits. And when we find or develop exploits, we can actually use that exploit to develop, to develop and deliver our payload. So this is the link here and uh, this is how the, the things are done. The payload is what we want to happen when, the exploit, when we exploit the vulnerability. So what happens after the exploit. And the payload is executing immediately after the exploit. So the step are finding information, seeking vulnerabilities, exploiting and then delivering the payload. So the payload delivers and executes immediately after the exploit. And the payload is just a piece of software that is malicious and have a lot of uh, signatures in, in antiviruses and database. So it's really high often to be triggered with some IDS, IPS and AV. So you have to be really like careful and you need to have a lot of practice, a lot of tests of creating a payload that can be actually resistant to that and actually invisible to most of these systems because all of them are working with either rules or giant database of signatures about malicious file and if you actually manage to develop your payload uh, unique that it won't get triggered by any of those machines uh, so we're gonna take this in uh, future videos you're gonna see how we actually bypass antivirus software and so on so this is the fundamentals about payloads and now let's move on to what hackers actually do. Uh, so the hackers are actually, as I said before, there's a strict link that every hacker follows and it's basically scanning the network and before that gathering information. Afterwards scanning the network, therefore enumeration of everything. So actually when you scan the network, you have to enumerate everything possible in order to see every possible vulnerability out there. You don't want to miss something because if one vulnerability is not doing the work, then the next one can actually do it. So you must scan for the most vulnerabilities out there. You have to scan for everything possible. And therefore you actually have to keep note of everything you found. So the next step is to seek for vulnerability and actually scan everything. Therefore, uh, after seeking, you have to actually find and discard that vulnerability, exact vulnerability that you know that the patch supports that vulnerability, you know that that machine is vulnerable to that you found, and therefore you can actually start exploiting that vulnerability. So you go for different exploits, you search for exploit, either you create yourself an exploit, and therefore you exploit that you have found, and after the exploit is completed, you deliver your payload and either gain complete control, take the system down and do the stuff payload is supposed to do. So this is the link, this is the procedure of actually gathering information, searching for weak spots and afterwards exploiting them. This is the overall procedure, so uh, thank you all guys for watching. And see you in the next video where we are going to actually start practicing and analyzing vulnerabilities in real time. So we're gonna see uh, how to actually behave, what to actually search for, what to actually do and how you can analyze vulnerabilities so you can furthermore exploit them. Keep in mind that information is the key and for, for successful exploit you need to be successful of analyzing vulnerabilities. In other words, your exploit wouldn't work because the system won't, won't be vulnerable. So we're gonna see all this in action in the next videos and stay tuned guys